My name is Barbara Nemko, and it has been my honor to serve as County Superintendent of Schools here in Napa for the last 18 years. And we are doing something this morning that we have never done before. Are you ready for the fifth grade challenge? <laughs> we have a lot of nervous people here this morning, mostly the celebrity contestants. <laughs> The kids look like they're doing fine, but our celebrities are just a tad nervous. I was getting some frantic emails from people saying, please no math questions. <laughs> to which my response was, ha. <laughs> so let me explain to you first the purpose of what we are doing this morning. In addition to having a really good time, I hope. How many of you, well, first of all, how many of you have ever been to fifth grade? Excellent. I did it four times. <laughs> <laughs> the fifth grade of today is not the fifth grade that we went to. How many of you have heard of the Common Core? Okay, we've heard of it, and everybody seems to have a slightly different idea of what the Common Core is or means. So one of the things we'd like to show you this morning is exactly what it is and why we have switched from what we used to do to the Common Core. And in just a very few words, the primary reason was that when we went to school, we memorized a lot of things. Remember memorizing the products of some country in South America? And I still remember jute, but what country it's related to, I have no idea, or why it was important. Today, it's what? <laughs> Suzanne, this is not an audition. <laughs> what we're trying to do today, because in the real world, it, to be successful today, there are certain skills you need to have. You need to be able to collaborate with other people. You need to be able to solve problems. You need to think critically and to think creatively. And guess what, folks? There isn't always just one right answer. So we are trying to help our children understand that when they go out into the real world, they're going to have to be able to be proficient in those skills. That's why our contestants are in teams today, because we're going to have them discuss the questions, and then they will share with you how they got their answers. Even our celebrities will be in pairs, so we're not gonna put any one person on the spot by themselves. So let me, before we introduce everybody, and we have a brief video about the Common Core and then we'll jump right into our game, let me tell you about the people who have helped sponsor this activity. We have collected from the Chamber of Commerce, the Napa Valley Education Foundation, the County Office of Education, Napa Learns, and three anonymous donors, a total of $2,500. The celebrity contestants will be earning points with each question that you get right. And so if we win all $2,500, each school, we have 10 schools represented, each school will get $250. So. But, but folks, you're going to play too, and there will be a bonus question that you will help us determine if they get the last 500. Um, I would like to thank the people from Napa Valley Unified who um, came up with the questions for today's event, and I had a list of them, but I left it somewhere, which I tend to do. Um, let me think. Could be here. Sarah Knox was instrumental in that. Also, um, Sam Fassendini, the coordinator of Common Core. Wave if you're here, please. Sarah, Sam. Uh, Sarah Williams, the director of assessment, achievement, and English learner services. Karen Strong, director of teaching and learning. And Maren Roca Hunt, all of whom were very helpful in picking the questions. Let's see. Um, 
I also want to thank Vineyard 29, because for the torture we're about to put the celebrity contestants through, each of you will receive a bottle of Vineyard 29 crew. So, <laughs> our student contestants will be receiving a bottle of sparkling cider. So everybody walks out with something. In addition, students, in addition, the students will get a Jamba Juice gift card. And all contestants, celebrities, students, all contestants will get an I Survived the Fifth Grade Challenge t-shirt. There seems to be some question among the adult celebrities about whether or not they will survive. So we're counting on you. We know you can do it. All right. The next thing that I want to do is introduce our MC for today. No, I don't. I think I want to do the Common Core video first. Uh, let's take just a minute to show you the video that explains what the Common Core is about, and then we'll introduce our MC and our celebrity contestants. What's at the core of California? What makes us special? What sets us apart? Well, we're always pushing new frontiers of innovation, leading the way to the future. What that future holds, we don't know, but we'll be ready when it comes. If our children have been prepared to think critically and to solve problems independently, if they can work effectively in teams and communicate clearly and powerfully, we'll be ready for all of the opportunities and challenges that lie ahead. Luckily, we have a plan today that will help us solve the problems of tomorrow. And providing teachers the support they need, California's next generation of students will be able to use all of the fresh ingredients and flavors available to us to keep California exceptional. That's what's cooking with the Common Core in California. It is my pleasure to introduce our MC for today. Hall Davidson had his first radio show when he was in elementary school. Then he taught math in LA Unified. He ran the TV station in Orange County. And he made his first appearance in Napa 21 years ago when we drafted him to come and do a workshop on how to use video in the classroom for teachers. And we had teachers learning how to teach their students to make videos and do storyboards and make the curriculum more exciting. He is currently the Senior Director of Global Initiatives for Discovery Education, which basically means he goes all over the world helping schools and administrators and teachers learn how to integrate digital technology into the classroom. This is no more open your book to page 27 and answer questions A through E. We are in a new world of education. And so we are so excited that he was able to come here today and MC Napa's version of Are You Ready for the Fifth Grade Challenge, Hall Davidson. Thank you. It's, it's very good to be here. It's very good to be here. Uh, we have two mics because one is for the room for you and the other is for the camera and for posterity. So there you go. So that's, that's why we need to give our celebrities at least a bottle of wine. And they get that, uh, not now, but later, right? Okay, that's, that's too bad. All right, so what we're, what we're going to do is explain how this game works. You're part of this game. They're part of the game. But uh, why don't we introduce our celebrities first, our first ones? That would be a good idea if I had remembered. Yes, let's introduce our celebrities. In no particular order, let me start here from the Board of Supervisors, Brad Wagon Connect. <laughs> One of the co-founders of the Napa Learns Board that spends their time helping us with the schools, Rick Jones from Jones Family Vineyards. Our newest member of the Napa City Council, Mary Loros. 
our fabulous library director for Napa County, Dennis Krymeyer. The director of the Nonprofit Coalition, Suzanne Schiff. And our wonderful district attorney, Gary Lieberstein. The ladies may know our next celebrity contestant, I hope you do, the owner of the Mustard Seed, Barbara Wiggins. Our assessor, registrar of voters, and one other thing. Recorder clerk. Re and recorder clerk, John Tudor. You may not recognize his face, but I know you're going to recognize his voice. Ira C. Smith from KVON. And the editor of the Napa Valley Register, Sean Scully. And member of the Napa County Board of Trustees and not planning to be a celebrity contestant, but we may draft him, Steve Orndorff. All right, so that's our lineup of celebrities, and we are going to pick two names at random for the first two rounds and have them sit up here, and then we'll pick two more na four more names for rounds three and four. Okay, Hall, turning it back to you to tell them how they're going to play, too, and how the game goes. Good. Do we want to get our celebrities in place? Yeah. So it's Brad and... Brad and Gary. Let's give them a hand. They're coming up. And you know, I'll tell you, I've seen the questions, and one group has a lot harder questions than the other groups. I won't tell you which one. I won't tell you which one. Yeah, one round. All right, so here's how we're going to play. We'll let them settle in. Uh, you're all going to see a question. And do we, do we walk them through, uh, are we going to walk them through poll everywhere first? Are we going to? No, we don't have to. Let's meet the teams. So first of all, we've got our celebrities in place. Let's meet our student teams. Uh, this student team is the Brown Bears. Uh, could you introduce yourself? Noah. Mm -hmm. Your name and your school. Um, Noah Torres, and I'm from Shear. Great. Andrea Oliveira, and I'm from Browns Valley. Great. Aylan Van Gorder, and I'm from West Park. Fantastic. Whose idea was Brown Bears? Oh, okay, that's very good. Over here, we'll move to uh, the Warriors. Warriors, um, again, names, please, and school. Hi, I'm Juliet Muschetti. I'm from Vichy Elementary. Great. I'm Ains Ainsley Adams, and I'm from Mount George Elementary. I'm John Moulton, and I'm from Shear Elementary. All right, let's give him a hand. So that's the teams. Here's how it's going to work. You're going to see a, uh, you're going to be able to participate too. So how many of you brought mobile phones? Good. They're good tools. So here's how you're going to do it. You're going to text. How many of you have text, sent a text message before? All right. So you're, instead of texting to Honey Pie, you're going to text to 22333. Three, three. So take out your phones now. Well, I've got everybody online here. So take out your cell phones and you're going to text instead of to mom, to 22333. Three, three. So that's who you're going to text to, all right? You're going to text to that. Then in your message, you're going to say N-C-O-E. So go ahead and do that now. Text that, and then we'll have you logged in. So you're going to uh, text to 22333, three, three, and your message is N-C-O-E. And that through the miracle of uh, the cell towers that go to servers, we're going to be able to show all of your answers in a display. So you want to see how that's going to work? How many people have already gotten in? All right, good. You know, I'm looking at this table right up here. Okay, good, good thinking. All right, so uh, here we go. Let's practice. Remember, you're going to text this to 22333. Where would you like to be right now? Now, I mean, in your mind, if you could walk, you're here in this room, but if you could walk out through that door, would you like to be in Maine, in which case your text is A? Would it like to be B? 
which is Idaho, C, California, someplace else in California, perhaps sunny Los Angeles, or D, Hawaii. So go ahead and text that. You're going to text again to 22333, either A, B, C, or D. And let's go to the web and now and see what it looks like. So here, uh, do we have the web up for that? All right, here we go. Here it comes. So here's what we got. So 22 people said Hawaii. Look, California, you're getting a few more votes here. Maine stuck at three. 24. Oh, California on the way again. Those of you who are trying to vote twice, it's too bad because you can only vote once. So that's how, isn't this a fun thing to do, though? Are teachers using this in classrooms? Yes. Yes. Are classrooms using it? Yes. It's an easy way to make sure you have those mobile phones you're putting them to use. So it looks to me like um, the Pacific state of Hawaii is where people most want to be. And that's good because if you reach under your chair, there's a round trip. No, I'm just kidding. Good grief. All right. So... This is for the schools. This is for the schools, not for United Airlines. All right, so let's go back. Here's the way it's going to work. <laughs> yeah, so Andre liked that. Um, we're gonna, you're going to see a question. Oh, let's practice again one more time. Do it one more time. Look on your sheets. You've got handouts, and this is to remind you that you have handouts. So on your handout, not everything goes on a screen. You're going to have to do some research today also. So there you'll see the following paragraph about Peter Piper. Who wants to try to read that? Oh, you want to read this for me, Noah? Go ahead. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Um, where's the pack of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? Woohoo! Not bad. So either the answer, Peter's name is mentioned in that once, twice, three times, or four times. Let's remember you're going to text to 22333, and then we'll go over and take a look at what the answers are. So let's take a look and see. Here it comes, again, the magic of the Internet. Few people picking one. I'm guessing those are the rascals that just want to see if it really works. <laughs> so, yes, Peter's name is actually mentioned in that uh, paragraph uh, four times. So there we go. All right, so here's the way we're going to play then. We're going to start this way. Everybody's going to get to see a question like we saw that question there. Everybody's going to see the same question. The celebrities will discuss among themselves, pick an answer, and they're going to write it on this board, this board, this special board. Then they're going to turn it face down up here, as are all the teams. They're going to discuss the answer. They're going to agree on an answer. They're going to write it down, turn it over, and that means that they're done. Same thing over here. Write the answer, turn it over, and we're done. There's a timer up here. Now, we're giving you two minutes because, remember, with Common Core, it's the conversation that's important. Turns out life is not a game show, it's the discussion, right? If only everything just had right answers. So the discussion, so the discussion will take two minutes, so you guys have some time to talk and arrive at your answer. Over here too, you have some time to talk. A lot of finger pointing at each other in case the answer's wrong, I'm just saying this way you can do it. So when they're done, they're going to put the answer up. You will be able to give your answer to, what's that number we text to? Um, 22333, and you'll be able to give what your answer will be. So we're going to see the questions. Then... We're going to see the celebrity answers. What did they say? What do they think the answer is? And then we're going to reveal the student answers and give them a chance to change their minds. Now, before they do that, we'll also show you your answers. Why don't we show them your answers first? Some of you have figured out how to use the Internet on your phone, and you might get some of the answers that way. But in reality, a well-crafted question the internet, access to the internet won't do everything for you. It's the thinking and the discussing that makes it work. Okay, so are we ready to play? All right, round one, this is math, math. Gary and Brad are already nervous. Here's the question. We'll start that timer. Kristen built the rectangular prism using cubic units. That's a rectangular prism, boys and girls. What's the volume? You poured water in it, what would you get? All right, let's start that timer. There we go, timer's rolling. So remember, discuss it, and you want to discuss it. Out there, don't forget to look, too. Remember, volume is what it holds. It holds a volume of air, a volume of water. How many units are there? Are you guys going to discuss it? Everybody agreed? You guys discussed it? Everybody agreed? All right, so you're done and you're just turned over, right? All right, when you guys agree, no, did you get in on this?
All right, the students are done. The celebrities are done. Okay, we can stop. Let's take a look at the celebrity answers. So let me, what did you say? How many cubic units? Yeah, there we go. A, the answer is A, and A was, let me go back and see. 40, A was 40, okay. So, students, did you agree or disagree? Let me ask you first, how did you decide the answer over here? Who wants to discuss that? Here, you want to, how did you decide it? Well, we looked at the length, width, and height of the <coughs> rectangular prism, multiplied them together, and <coughs> together it made the, uh, the cubic units of the rectangular prism. Now you looked at it, right? Right? They looked at it, saw it? That sounds good. How did you guys decide? They looked at the length, the height, and the uh, width. What did you, what do you look at? Well we, well, we see of in the problem, and that means multiplication. And so we saw that there for the length, width, and yeah, we saw that there's two, and then we times that by four, and two times four is eight, and then we times that by five, and that's 40, and we got A. So good thinking, good re rational thinking there. I'm just curious, how did you guys decide to do it? <laughs> yeah, exactly what they said. It looked like th there, were, there were 10 on one side, there were four on another side, and it seemed like it was more than 10, and, and we, we don't even know what cubic units are. And, and shout out, hi, Mom. There we go, good. That'll cost you $50. Okay, let's, um, students, let's reveal your answers. We know they did A and 40. Go ahead and flip them up, let's see. 40, over here. The brown bears said 40 or answer A. So you both agree, right? You both, so it's still a chance to change if you didn't like their thinking. All right, final answer is A. Let's take a look and see what everybody else out here got. Let's see, we had 30 people that agree with you. One just holding out for 30 and two uh, holding out for C, the 20 cubic. So uh, we've got a deal, it's 40 cubic, that is the correct answer. Give the, everybody a hand, excellent work. A is the correct answer. All right, so the celebrities we're keeping track of this have already earned points and the money for the schools that they represent. Let's look at, who's got them over there? What's the score? They got one. They got one, okay, that's good. That'll translate into dollars later. Let's look at the next question. All right, here we go, math number two. What positive, oh, you're so confident now. Oh, we got the cubic uh, volume here. Let's look at this one. What's the positive value for B in this expression that makes this statement true? Six times B is less than 12, but it's greater than six. So what's the positive value for B that makes the statement true? Now remember, it's the discussion that's as important as the actual answer. How do you figure out what that means? So what is B up there? That's going to make a statement true. Either it's one half, it's one, it's one and a half, or it's two and a half. Our timer is going. Are you glad you're not up there now? Okay, good. Yeah. All right, here we go. Just a little bit of panic up here among these sitting celebrities. Just a little bit. Out there, what are we doing? Looking, writing, are you helping? Good, I'll have to ask you in person. So you're crafting an answer, right? You're crafting an answer? Are you getting an answer? All right, good, then I can ask. All right, that's 30 seconds. You guys done? Okay, the warriors are done. Brown bears? Brown bears are done. Celebrities, are you done? All right, so here we go. Let's see what the celebrities, how many thought that was a hard problem? Oh, well done. All right, well, let's see then. They think it's a piece of cake. Gary, what do you got? C, one and a half. C, one and a half. Let's see if the students agree with that. Over here, Warriors, what did you have? What's your answer? A, which is a half? Absolutely. So what's your thinking on that? How did you, uh, you want to explain how you got that? Um, because if you multiply it by one, then it'll be six. And then if you multiply it by two, then it would be 12. So then we just decided on one half. Okay, so there we go, a little multiplication. Good thinking. Then yeah. What about here? What did you guys pick? What did the brown bears pick? C, one and a half. So, you know, got some choices here. Who, who can explain that? How, how did you decide on your answer, C? Because 
Very smart group of people over here. Hand-picked students. They picked A. What did you, how did you do your picking? Well, we saw that, um, so like six times one would be six, and it said it had to be greater than six, but, um, s and one half is below one, s and D, t six times two is 12, and it had to be less than 12, and two and one half is um, greater than 12, so we thought that it would be one and a half. All right, one, one half less than 12 to me, but when you move the multiplication, it comes to me, yes, it's very good. So here you go, Gary and Brad, you've got one person that agrees with you, one, one team that didn't. You're gonna go with the Warriors, you're gonna go with the Bears, what do you think, gonna change your answers? No, no, we, we go with the Bears, we like the logic. The, oh, they like the logic of the Bears, all right, let's see what you guys all said. They all went with C. Okay, Warriors, you hanging in there? Oh, oh, remember, it's the process. It's working together, and that's really the way that it works. The correct answer is, in fact, C. The answer is one and a half. So there you go. Let's give them all a hand again. All right, the next question. We're going to leave math and go to science. We're going to go to science. Yes. Oh, yeah, how did the audience? Well, we did. Who's got the, the, everybody went with C. What did you guys get here? C. They got C. They're not using the mobile phone. Everybody else we did see seems to be overwhelmingly going for C. So even the drifters are all being pulled into the, uh, into the center one and a half. All right, are you ready for science? All right, here we go. Here's the science question. You're going to have to think about this. Gary, Brad, you've been around for a while, California. Here's the deal. Picture below shows a place, a place, let's say it's California, where the air currents will form due to the uneven heating of the earth. In which direction will air currents move, right? So part of it is cool, part of it is hot. As you know, whenever you got different temperatures, something's going to move. In this case, it's going to be the wind. So for you guys, what do you think? Is it going to be straight down over the land? In other words, is the wind air current going to come straight down? Is it going to move from the land toward the sea? Straight up above the sea, it'll heat up and then just go straight up from the sea toward the land. So it's daytime, the sun is out. The sea is cool. The land is warm. We got warm air over the land. Where's the breeze going to come? And remember, we want to know why you thought that. You jumping in on this, Noah? Are these chairs too big? You can get out of your chair and just jump in over there if you want. Looks like the brown bears are writing their answer. Looks like the warriors are writing their answer. Looks like the celebrities are writing their answer. You gonna draw hands praying on that? All right, so here we go. 35 seconds, we're waiting on the brown bears. Brown bears. All right, 30 seconds to go, plenty of time. Let's look at the celebrity answers. Gary, Brad, what do you got? New question, please. There it goes. <laughs> okay, D, which I'm guessing is a wild guess. So how, how did you guys decide that, seriously? It's an educated guess because if you think about, like, storms move from Hawaii, they move across the water toward the land, and then the, the old adage that heat rises. So, I, you know, we're thinking it moves across the water, hits the land, and rises. Oh, and, and, and Brad says it sucks it in. Sucks it in, says Brad. Yeah, that's good. Notice how they managed to sneak Hawaii into the conversation, knowing that most of you want to be there right now. All right, student answers. Let's see. Brown Bears, what did you say? They said D. Brown Bears said B. All right, let's take a look at the uh, Warriors. Warriors, what did you say? You said C. Ooh. Now, I got to say, this is exactly why questions like this are part of the Common Core. It's not an easy thing to get to. It's your thinking and how it works. And sometimes your thinking is correct, but the answer is different. So, Brown Bears, you want to explain, Andre, uh, how you got, your, how the, got the answers? You, you picked which one? B? All right, how did you get B? And what is B? What's the answer for B? Well, B is from the land towards the sea okay. and we thought that maybe because the war air uh, would move up and start rising and once it got to the sea which is cold it would turn to water and go to the sea and cold air also goes down goes down okay 
So it would rise hot off the land and then go down to the sea, right? Or maybe we got some precip. What about you guys? Your answer was C, and the answer for C is which one? Straight up. So why don't you explain what you think that is? Um, well, we were thinking about evaporation, and we thought that the warm air would go up, so we saw it straight up above the sea. Okay. So the sea heats up, warm air rises, warm air rise? Yes. You get precipitation? Yes. So all these are things you think about when you're talking about a natural thing. So let's look at, you want to change, by the way? Real difference here. Did you use in your uh, thinking your personal experiences with the ocean and with breezes or uh, trips to Hawaii? Yeah. I'm nervous about the warriors talking about evaporation because I wasn't. We weren't thinking evaporation. Oh uh, well, we'll just have to see. All right, let's look and uh, they're not going to change. Let's see what everybody else thought. They thought the great majority went with D from the sea to the land. Uh, we also had straight down over land a little bit. Well, people went with B and C. Uh, the majority went with D. So let's see. First of all, before we find the correct answer, was the logic here good? They talked about stuff, and that's, again, what Common Core wants you to do. In life, there's no, oh, good, you have the right answer, right? It's the way you think about it. Let's see what the right answer really is. The right answer is from the sea toward the land D. Oh, my gosh, the celebrities are ahead. How can this be? How can this be? Where did you go to the fifth grade, Gary? I went to Wilbur Avenue Elementary School in Tarzana, California. There you go. What about you, Brad? Browns Valley. Valley, there you go. All right, so we got good fifth grades all around. Let's look at the, is that the uh, last question for this group? All right, that's the last question for this group. Celebrity came out very well. Thank you, students. Good thinking. Thank you, students. Good thinking. Let's get a new group in. Thank you very much. You can take your little name placards with you. Very good thinking. All right, so the celebrities, how much do they have here? All right, so celebrities have won $500 for the school. $500, nice work for Brad. All right, as you know, the mental exhaustion in doing this kind of thinking, two math, one science, can just burn a person out. So we're going to bring in new people so, so as not have to get a new district attorney. All right, students are ready to go? And Barb, you want to explain who we're going to get? You're drawing right now? The bar has been set very high, and the questions don't get easier. And the other factor that we're not, that we have to remember, there's something very frightening about sitting up there in front with two students that you didn't know until half an hour ago with a timer and the pressure of having an audience like this. Honestly, when we did a trial run of the questions, when I got to that one, it was kind of eeny, meeny, miny, mo. That was my logic. Not so good. These are, these are hard. They're challenging questions. So we are very proud of our kids. They're thinking about it. They're talking to each other. They're collaborating. And our teachers, for whom the Common Core is still very new, and we're still learning what to do. So now we're going to bring up two more celebrities. Mr. Rick Jones and Ms. Suzanne Schiff. Yep. Yeah, you're not supposed to. Uh oh. Uh oh. All right, so here we go. It's the same basic process. Uh, let's hear from the students who want to introduce yourself. Did you pick a team name? What is your team name? The Amazing A's. The Amazing A's. Okay, so uh, you want to introduce yourself, August, and send this all down, and I'll write the Amazing A's for you. I'm, you take the mic. Go ahead. Oh, right. I'm August Nelson, and I'm from Yontville Elementary School. Hey, hey. I'm Claire Lise Fondra, and I'm from St. Helena Elementary School. I'm Nathan Langrand, and I'm from Pueblo Vista Elementary School. Thank you very much. Let's go over here. What is uh, your team name? Kobe, what's your team name? Team Challenger. Team Challenger. Oh. All right, you want to introduce yourself, Kobe, in your school? 
I'm Kobe, and I go to West Park Elementary School. I'm Sarthak. Uh, I go to Canyon Oaks Elementary School. Um, I'm Lydia Mitchell, and I go to Mount George. Thank you very much. And again, what we're looking for is the thinking processes of these students, right? Good experience for them? I think so, because being in kind of a pressure cooker is sometimes what we're going to end up with in life. So let's look at our first question. Round two, we're going to start with math. Here's the question. Oh, you're going to, Rick, you're going to so wish you were in the first group. Here we go. Which plot lines could Mr. Flying get have done? So we're get, you're going to need to read the question on this one. And here it is. You've got a teacher who wants to know how much time his students are spending doing homework. Here's what he does. He makes a little plot. He's got 15 students in his class that did homework the night before. The rest were all working hard somewhere. Uh, Two-thirds, two-fifths of those students spent three-fifths of an hour doing homework. Which is the line plot could he have made? Take a look. So hard to see up here, but you can see on your paper, you see the number of hours. Some of the students were at uh, two-fifths of an hour. So we've got two, two axes here. One is the number of students going straight up, and one is the number of hours going straight across. That's a clue. So the question is, which of these could have been the one that Mr. Flanagan made? Remember, he has 15 students. Two-fifths of them spent three-fifths of an hour doing homework. So that's a lot of math, a lot of numbers being thrown around. Some of them are necessary, some of them aren't. And perhaps I should explain at this point that some of these questions have more than one right answer. What? Yes, some of these questions have more than one right answer. So it's very possible that two of these graphs are appropriate. I think the timer's going all the way into the red on this one. A lot of math in there. You might need it all. You might need some of it. Don't forget, teams group together. Suzanne and Rick doing a little math. Brad and Gary, very happy they're sitting at the center table. All right, we have half a minute, 23 seconds, 22. 21, Team Challenger has decided they are writing their answer. The amazing A's also have their answers. Adults, 12 seconds. 12 seconds, you guys ready? Did you get your little sheet? Did you write it down? All right, you got it? All right, everybody else, hopefully you texted in your answer. Let's take a look. Celebrity, what is your answer over here? B, you think that the uh, graph the line plot in B is correct. All right, let's take a look at our students. Students, team uh, Amazing A's, what did you guys decide? Go ahead. Well, we decided answer C because two-fifths of 15 students is 10. And in answer C, the line plot says that 10 students spend three-fifths of an hour, and then the rest you add up to 15 because the other ones go over 15 and there is only 15 students. Okay. So that's their thinking on that and they picked C. Knows we got some fractional work going on in there. What about you, Team Challenger? They also picked B. So who wants to explain your thinking on that? Um, so uh, the number of students times two, like two-fifths of the number of students in his class is six. So, um, the in the three fifths of it, yeah, in when on the line plot, um, you have to find three fifths of an hour, and there should be it should go up to six students. So you looked on the left, saw it was six, and then drew a line across to see where it was, and you found it in B, right? Yeah. All right. Everybody agree with that? All right. So what was your answer, celebrities? You had B. You had C and you had B. It's your chance to change. What are you thinking? All right, let's see what everybody else had. It's kind of a tough one, so look. Ooh, one said C, 10 said B, two said A. Oh, look, 
be picking up steam as we, uh, as we go. Yeah, because they can do it as much as they want. And if you tried to Google it, you didn't have much help, really. Uh, didn't have much help. So let's see, again, B, just shrinking the other ones. Um, all right, the answers are B and D. Who out here had B and D? Very good work. B and D both correct. Remember, more than one answer can be correct. And one of these things, so Rick and Suzanne looking again going, dang, what do you think, Rick? Did you miss one? Uh, I like B still. That, uh, <laughs> I, I'm well, B. B is correct. What do you think? B, it's a trick question. Life is a trick question. That's exactly right. So anyway, it's a tough one, but one of the things we try, we find ourselves doing in school is thinking there's one right answer, right? And we really tr need to sort of disabuse ourselves of that. So let's give everybody a hand. Very nice. So you have to be able to do math, but you also have to do thinking, right? And that's one of the important parts of it. All right, so let's look at the next one. Those that did not get both right answers, and that's everyone up here, have the chance to redeem themselves with the next math question. Here we go. Again, you're going to need to look at the question, which is number two on page three. Maxine wants to bake. She needs to buy flour. She'll need one and three quarters cups of flour to make a chocolate cake. She'll need two and a third cups of flour for chocolate chip cookies. Finally, she's going to need one and two thirds cups of flour for brownies. She wants to buy enough flour to bake with and only have less than two cups left over, right? She's going to do a lot of baking. So the question is, what kind of bag are you gonna, gonna buy? You're gonna do all that baking. Which size of flour are you gonna buy? Right, three cups, four cups, seven cups, eight cups, 10 cups. Now in this case, you may not have to do heavy math. You just have to be able to think about a rough total of what it can be. People see fractions, they just wanna jump on it, but sometimes you can just think about it and get it. I remember you guys, combine your thinking, 53 seconds. How many people out here have gotten an answer already? Ooh, quick. Quick. <laughs> Who's had, who got an answer out here? Who got an answer? All right. Don't tell me the answer, but how, how did you do it? Well, you practically add all those uh, fractions together, then make sure that one of these options is not more than two of that answer. So come up with an so did you actually add the fractions together or just do a quick estimate? Oh, you actually did it. Okay. Did the math part. Did she help you? Good. Okay, good. All right, 18 seconds. Who's got an answer? Team's over here. Looks like the team challengers are going for it. Over here, you guys are done? All right. Celebrities, you have six seconds. You have three, two, one. All right. So. Let's see, celebrity answers, what do you have? They have picked C, celebrity answers have picked C. Let's see over here, team, uh, the amazing A's, what did you pick, what answer? C, well, so far so good, leave that fit. And here, uh, team challenger, C and, is that a, C Andy. Oh, C Andy. Uh, Rick, Suzanne, remember, Last time you went with one answer and it just wasn't enough. What about this time? You got somebody saying C and D. You want to change your answers? I don't think so. Well, how about like this? <laughs> oh, they're trying a little tiny D over here. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. It's like getting married. It's either yes or no. That's it. So you're going to stick with C. They're going to stick with the single one. Let's see what everybody else out here had. Let's see what we got. So a lot of people thought C, two people also thought D. Remember, you would have called in and had to, had to have gotten either one. So it could be that. Let's see what the correct answer is. The correct answer is D. D, one bad cup. You guys got, whoa. What? D? Oh, we've got, oh. Very sharp. Very sharp. So that was what we call our bonus question. 